Hey guys, it's Cole, and welcome to my media tour coverage for the melee DPS changes coming in Dawn Trail. I'm going to have a video dedicated to Viper that will be released at the same time as this video that I'm going to link in the description and the pinned comment. Also, all this coverage is going to be on my website, epics.gg, so if you're looking for that kind of coverage, then definitely check that out. First up, let's talk about general melee DPS role changes. The first major thing is that Breaking Wind is now going to heal you for 800 potency, and that your damage mitigation button faint is going to be upgraded to last for 15 seconds. Reaper is up first, and Gluttony is going to give you a new effect where it gives you two stacks of a buff called Executioner. Executioner simply upgrades your Gibbet and Gallows and Guillotine abilities to Executioner's Gibbet, Executioner's Gallows, and Executioner's Guillotine, which basically hit harder and look cooler. Grim Swath, Guillotine, and Bloodstock also are going to get a effect that now it can't be stacked with Executioner just because those abilities change over. Enshroud is going to give you a new status called Oblatio, which is going to let you cast the off GCD ability Sacrificium, which is going to be an off GCD ability that deals 500 potency and some of that being AoE. Communio is going to give you a new effect where it gives you Perfecto Parada, where if you use Communio with the status Perfecto Occulta active, where you get Perfecto Occulta, you're going to obtain that when you have your 2 minute burst ability Plentiful Harvest be used. And so the flow of things go, okay you use your party buff, then you cast Plentiful Harvest, which everyone's super familiar with, and that will give you Perfecto Occulta. And then when you next use Communia, you are going to then get Perfecto Parada. And so what Perfecto Parado lets you use is it lets you use the weapon skill, so on the GCD, called Perfecto, which is your capstone mega hard hitting big blast skill. Next up is Dragoon, and the first change is that the basic combo has had some pieces reworked. The second combo pieces have been upgraded with new animations and a bit more damage, but the same effect to Lance Barrage and Spiral Blow. These, however, have lost some of the previous tooltip text saying that the effect of Fang and Claw bared ends upon execution of a weapon skill, and the same thing for wheel in motion for the other half of the combo too. Now it's just going to be a direct combo action into either Heaven's Thrust, which goes into Fang and Claw from the flank mechanic, or Chaotic swing into uh, Spring into Wheeling Thrust to be done from the target's rear, which both of these paths leads to the new unified ability Drake's Bane, which Drake's Bane has no positioners and that is going to allow you to have that same Draconian Fire buff applied to you, which allows you to execute the ability Raid and Thrust when you go back into the combo wheel. And so basically, it goes through that same combo loop and pathing again and again, switching sides. And it might sound like a lot of changes here, but basically it's some positional requirements were waived in the new form of the Dragoon and we're going to get upgraded second combo pieces. Jump is now going to combo chain on the same hotkey to become Mirage Dive, which is huge QOL. It's also worth noting that now Mirage Dive no longer has the additional effect of strengthening. Your Dragon's Gauge is Dragon's Gaze, which that has been streamlined out of the kit. Dragonfire Dive is now a 2 minute ability that is weaved in the OGCD window and is going to turn into Rise of the Dragon, which Rise of the Dragon is simply a massive off GCD ability that deals 550 damage in an AoE. Gearskogel and Nastrond have a new interaction where Gearskogel will grant Nastrond ready, and now Nastrond has a 2 second cooldown, which means Nastrond got a lot of QOL. This, however, does not mean less Nastrond. You are going to, how to say, you have the trait Life of the Dragon clearly state that you still get three stacks of Nastrond ready from using Gerskogel, and it's just a less cooldown between your, like, Nastrond casts, so it's easier to get them out. Now, going to go to the Life of the Dragon mode, you no longer have to build up to get Life of the Dragon from Gerskogel anymore. It's like you have no more Mirage Dive spam in order to build up the Life of the Dragon from this skill. You are going to immediately be put into Dragon mode when you use Gerskogel. However, Gerskogel is having its cooldown raised from 30 seconds to 60 seconds, and so that's definitely something that has been extended and so like the Mirage Dives are kind of being baked into the kit kind of. Dragoon is getting a new mobility ability to replace the lost mobility since Spine Shatter Dive is being removed and the ability is called Winged Glide and has two charges. They do not deal damage and you get one charge back every minute up to two total charges. Star Diver is now going to grant you the effect of Star Cross ready and that's just another off GCD effect that does huge damage. So we're still getting lots of weaving in Dragoon for sure still. OGCD space still totally being used. Third up is Monk, and Monk is seeing a decent bit of changes too. First set of changes is that the rotation kind of has an implied combo system now. It is still 
not an explicit combo system and it still has a lot of flexibility but it's implied so monk gets upgrades to boot shine true strike and snap punch to leaping oppo rising raptor and pouncing curl and you're going to see the ponzi boosts baked into dragon kick twin snakes and demolish and what's neat to note here is that you get two stacks of raptor's fury and three stacks of curl's fury and just one stack of opo opo so you're getting some like stacks of these buffs that you're getting here for that implied combo system monk's meditation skills have had a bit of a rework and we're going to start with monk's meditation skill has been slightly reworked into steeled meditation at lower levels and we'll move into the action steel peak where steel peak is similar today going to still be a single target off gcd burst of damage monk is also going to get another meditation skill held in spirited meditation which acts very similar to steeled meditation but this one is going to lead into the howling fist ability which acts the exact same here as it does today off gcd aoe ability 100 potency of damage and aoe forbidden meditation is another new meditation skill that will seemingly just open all the chakra the same as steeled meditation so it's like a steeled meditation upgrade however forbidden chakra is going to be getting a little bit larger damage number today with 60 potency and it's going to be the follow-up to that perfect balance has been reworked slightly and that that now it explicitly states that going into opo opo form gives a curl chakra going into raptor form is going to give an opo opo chakra and going into curl form is going to give a raptor chakra but aside from that it is really the same skill i originally was going to say this skill has been reworked significantly but not really. Brotherhood is getting a slight change where now you can have up to 10 chakra open which prevents overflowing chakra which is very nice qol. Uh, quality of life because some people are going to be like what's qol? That means quality of life. Planet Star has gotten a decent rework where now it does a baseline a lot more potency and where the more chakra stacks that you have the more damage it's going to deal. So say you have like 10 chakra you will deal 800 more potency of damage and so that's a total of 1600 potency from just one success star cast if you have the 10 chakra open which again be risky of over capping and that is obviously going to be when you have brotherhood active that you get all 10 chakra open so the developers also did add a line saying that if you critically strike with six side star that you won't get a chakra probably just to stop like an internal loop of the skill riddle of wind is also getting a follow-up skill which is winds reply which is an on gcd weapon skill that does a metric ton of damage riddle of fire is also getting a follow-up skill where it is called fires reply which deals even more damage at 1300 pound c on the gcd and gives you the effect of formless fist which is an on gcd weapon skill for riddle of fire riddle of earth is also getting a big follow-up ability in earth's reply which is pretty awesome aoe heal for the group like when you personally take damage you will be getting a buff on yourself which is like resolve of earth and that's going to bump it up to 500 potency for the group which is pretty awesome however monk no longer has mantra going into dawn trail so this has been mantra has kind of been flipped and reworked into like a personal like heal the scholar in me is a little sad but I guess this gives Monk more control over the efficacy of their ability, and so I I can see why. Because ultimately, it really would feel bad if you're a Monk, and like you're waiting for the, hey, healers, I threw out Mantra, can you use it? Yeah, yeah, player agency is important. And then finally, Monk is getting Elixir Burst, which is just a straight up uh, upgrade to Elixir Field. Next up is Ninja, and Ninja is getting a host of awesome changes that I like a lot. So, Bavacavra is going to get a bit more damage for 500 base potency to 530. Mug is having its increase to the Ninki gauge removed in Dawn Trail, but Mug is being upgraded at level 66 to Doku Mori, which is a brand new skill that does everything that Mug used to, but also gives the Ninki gauge increase and also grants the special effect named Higgy to the Ninja. Higgy is going to let you execute the ability Zesho Meppo, which is best thought of as an upgrade to Bavakakra. So because it is the same button, it's also going to be a single target spender that does high damage at the cost of 50 Ninki Gauge. So just easier to like think about it as a Vavakakra upgrade and the keybind literally changes to it. We have a similar thing going on for Death Frog Medium. It's just Hellfrog Medium upgrade when you're under the effect of Higgy minutes you're going to get an upgrade to these abilities. Ten Chi Jin is going to get an additional effect where it gives you the buff Ten Re Jindo Ready and that is going to allow you to execute the ability Ten Re Jindo which is a massive 1000 potency AoE that is off of the GCD so it's an awesome ability. Mei Sui is getting a buff to the potency increase of spenders which includes Bavakakra to 530 and this also includes this Zesho Meppo skill that new spender that we just talked about for the Higgy effect. The Suiton effect also has had its like hidden effect named to Shadow Walker. Hake, Mujin Satsu, and Armor Crush have had their ability of extending 
understanding Hutan removed since Hutan itself was completely reworked out of the ninja's kit and is now a passive, so you don't need to worry about managing that anymore in Dontro. Armor Crash now has a brand new effect where it grants two stacks of Kazimatoi, which is going to increase the potency of Alien Edge by 60 and can be stacked up to five times. Last but certainly not least is Samurai changes in Dontrail, and Samurai is going to be adding their Ayajutsu upgraded, where when you have the Tendo effect active, you can use Tenka Gokan, and that's going to be upgraded to Tendo Gokan, and Midara Setsugeka is going to change to Tendo Setsugeka. Probably the easiest way to explain this is that we have four new Tendo skills, which are extremely more powerful variants of the ones that we already have. You're going to be getting the Tendo buff through using Meikyo Shisui now. Iki Shoten now has an additional effect that grants Zanshin ready. Zanshin is going to be an off GCD ability that deals 900 potency in an AoE, so it's a pretty fun burst ability. Shoha got an icon change, but also Shoha now also does a bit more damage, does it in an AoE line in front of you, and it's reworked. Reworking says that it consumes all stacks of meditation upon execution, whereas before it said meditation effect ends upon or fades upon execution. Also now I guess that it doesn't share a recast timer with Shoha 2 since that text was also removed and Shoha 2 doesn't seem to really be a thing anymore. Tsubame Geishi has gone changed a bit too, so it used to have two charges that would come back every 60 seconds and now it's an instant cast with a 2.5 second recast time. It still however does repeat the previously executed Ayajutsu, but it can no longer be used for specifically hitting and ban uh, that is specifically now li listed in the tool text now in order to execute tsubame geishi you need to be under the effect called tsubame geishi ready which is something that you get the skill meikyo shisui so now meikyo shisui is going to give you both tsubame geishi charges as well as that new finisher lastly samurai is going to get a new ability named tengetsu which is just an upgrade to third eye and will give you a delayed health restore later and with that, these are all of the newer changes, and I hope that you guys enjoy a lot of them. There are a lot of changes in here, and I was like, oh my god, can I simplify this? And I'm hoping that you guys are super excited, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. I think that there's some pretty awesome abilities here, guys. I'm personally hyped.